Welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a moment and look at the healing brush tool in Photoshop. It is the feature that I love most for cleaning up skin and quickly retouching skin in a realistic way so I don't have to go in with a crazy amount of Gaussian blur and blur the living daylights out of my skin and lose all the detail and blah 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 blah. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how I use the tool as a photographer instead of going into some you know crazy long technical spiel about oh this is what this feature does and that feature does here's how I really use this tool and maybe how you as a photographer would also use this tool so let's take a look at this um, we are going to take a look at a couple of the features just because you do need to know your way around the tool a little bit so the healing brush is located right over here beneath the spot healing brush I rarely use the spot healing brush it just doesn't give me enough control and occasionally I'll use the patch tool as well but the rock star here is the healing brush tool. It gives us an incredible amount of functionality and customization. Um, so when we're going in and, and just cleaning up her skin, which is already pretty nice, um, but we're just going to get rid of some of the different blemishes and really clean this up. So the first thing we're going to look at with the healing brush is one of the things that makes it so powerful is it's just like a regular brush, right? So I just right clicked and I can set a size for the brush. Okay, and I can also set a hardness of the brush and typically I'm going to use this very soft because I want any healing that I'm doing to just almost seamlessly blend into the surrounding pixels and for her face that would mean that we're just blending into the surrounding skin texture and tone. All right, but you may say, hey, well, I can do that with the, the spot healing brush, big whoop de doo Well, we're going to talk about um, exactly why this, this healing brush is so much more powerful and in my opinion is so much better. Also, we have different blend modes. Um, the blend modes that I typically use are normal. I'm almost always on normal, but occasionally I'll go to replace, which is like the clone stamp tool, but you preserve some of the grains and textures um, in the photograph. And also I will use light and sometimes when I'm retouching skin, uh, when I need to target sort of the darker pixels in a specific area. Um, but really normal is where you're going to hang out most of the time. Um, source, don't worry about that. Aligned, I usually have this checked on. That's just so my source point kind of moves as I am painting and uh, healing. And then sample, I almost always keep this on current and below. And the reason I do that is because normally I'm healing on a new layer. So we're going to create a new layer over here when we start healing. But just bear in mind, you can also just sample from all the layers, which can be kind of a pain in the neck because if you've got all these adjustment layers and all kinds of other craziness that you definitely don't want to sample uh, from, it can it can become a pain in the neck. So current and below is normally what I use, but occasionally I'll also go to current layer only. Um, but again, because I'm normally healing on a separate layer, usually current and below is what I do. And just a quick side note, this little button here, this uh, basically tells the healing brush to ignore adjustment layers. So if you are using all layers here, you can typically just say, hey, look, healing brush, ignore all this junk that you're going to try to sample and it, it really gets crazy uh, with adjustment uh, layers. So just something to keep in mind, but don't sweat it. So typically, uh, I'm just working on a normal blend mode, aligned and current and below. So with all that nonsense in mind, what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new layer. So I'm going to pop a new layer in here, and I'm going to name it Blemishes. It's normally what I do. And then I take a look at my healing brush and just make sure that the size is something acceptable. Again, I told you uh, that I usually keep the hardness down around 0%. So right now the brush is a little bit too big. Let's zoom in here on her face. I'll start down here on her chin. And we want the brush to be much smaller, so I'm going to use my square bracket keys. The left bracket makes the brush smaller. And something like this is good. So. Now what we need to do is hold down our Alt or Option key. And when we do that, this is where the power and beauty of the healing brush tool really shines forth. And this is something that you can't do with a spot healing brush. We can sample from a specific area of our image. All right, so I'm going to choose an area of similar texture and tone. So the lighting value, we want to be about the same as well. And then I can just go ahead and paint over some of these blemishes. Great. I'm going to resample. I'm going to resample up here. And then I'm just going to go through this entire image and sample to get rid of the spots, all right? So sort of mild acne or just little blemishes in her skin. All right, now one thing I do is when I'm working, you can see here is almost this highlight. When I'm working with a highlight, I usually sample within the highlight and then paint to the edge of the highlight because if you start to sample out here, you can then start to introduce a big, you know, glop of shadow into the highlight. Another thing that I do is check this out over here. We've got sort of this light mark. I kind of want to blend all that together. So I'm just going to select sort of straight below it and I'm going to paint across it and let's see what happens. 
it's actually pretty good. Um, sometimes you have to be careful um, when you're working with kind of darker to lighter areas, it can start to look a little funky. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna speed the video up and I'm just gonna go through and clean up all of these little, uh, little marks all over her skin and uh, I'll be right back. And there we can see that we have gone ahead and gotten rid of the majority of the little spot blemishes. However, there's one thing that I do want to cover. Well, we can shut our blemishes layer off and turn it back on to see what we've done. Okay, so you can see. And anything that jumps out at you is looking crazy. You can go in and fix. Now, she's already got great skin, so this is a relatively easy uh, use of the healing brush. However, there are a couple little samples here for you. Uh, for instance, down here, we can see that I have this one little blemish on her skin. And whenever I go in with the healing brush, the hotkey for the healing brush, by the way, is the letter J. Whenever I go in and paint over it, we can see we're picking up uh, this darkness out here and it's making this dark blotch. We don't like that. There's a couple ways we can go about sort of adjusting this. Number one, we can just make the healing brush smaller, right? Our brush tip. So right over here, I can just size it down a little bit and then sample out here and see what that does. And that's not bad, but something else you can do as well is use the lasso tool and just go in and circle the area that you want to heal, okay? So what's going to happen is the healing brush now is going to ignore all this dark stuff outside of our selection. So we can sample like up here if we want outside of our selection, but when we paint in there, you can see it's not going to even come close to sampling from these darker pixels. Now it's a little bit too much of a difference, so I probably want to sample from right about there and then go in there gently and make the adjustment. And you can see, just like that, we've gone ahead and got rid of that little blemish there. So that is one thing you do wanna watch for with the healing brush tool. And I like to tell people, the healing brush tool is very much like a touch and feel tool. The more you use it, the more you're just going to learn it and kind of understand, okay, when I get close to this high contrast edge, I need to just be careful. I either need to size my brush down or go ahead and use the lasso tool to just sort of break this little chunk of skin away so I can just work on that and have the healing brush ignore everything else. So the other kind of blemish here that we're going to work on are these lines. Again, very subtle. She's a young girl and again has great skin. Um, so the lines are nothing that really we would need to do take too much care of. Um, but in some applications, you want to get rid of everything. Um, however, uh, we're going to go ahead and just do it just so we can see how it's done. So you can see we've got a line here and then kind of a more of a, a dimple here than any kind of like a wrinkle or line. There's a, a crease and then we've got a couple up here on our forehead. So the way I normally attack these is I make the brush barely wider than the line. So the size brush that I have now is great. And then I'll just sample to one side of the line and I'll begin just painting right along it, just like so. All right. So the key here is sampling texture and color that's right there where the, you know, how the line basically would be if it wasn't a little crease, okay? Just gonna go right through here. There we go, perfect. And touch up any little texture areas that aren't quite right. If anything looks funky, um, you know, take the time and just go ahead and clean it up. She's got this one little line right there coming out of the upper lip. And then over here, this is a little bit bigger, so we're gonna size the brush up and we're just gonna see what happens here. We're gonna take some of this texture and tone and cover that up like that and see how it looks. And it definitely looks a little funky down here. So let's just try uh, adding a little bit more healing and cover that up a little bit more. Oops, it's not quite right. There we go, something like that doesn't look too bad. I would probably spend a little bit more time playing with that. And then up here on the forehead, these are a piece of cake. So again, size the brush down and we're gonna go right underneath that uh, little line. We're gonna go right underneath that line. And again, I'm essentially dropping my sample point straight below where I'm gonna start painting. That way, for instance, here, now that we're in the highlight area, you can see we're sampling right from the highlight. So it blends it right in, all right? Just like so. And then take this guy right across. There we go, just like that. So in addition to these kind of lines that we get rid of in the skin, we also have little blemishes, like this little tiny spot or fleck of dirt that's gotten into her eyebrow in the course of shooting. We were out on location and junk was flying everywhere. So you're gonna have little specks and things like that that you may wanna get rid of. So normally what I would do in a situation like this is I would sample from the edge of her eyebrow, right? So I'm sampling right there on the edge of her eyebrow and I can line up the edge of the eyebrow kind of right where it would go through, just like that. 
and Photoshop will blend it all back together. So that is a high contrast edge, but in this case with the eyebrow, we're able to just go ahead and sample the edge of the eyebrow and continue it right through. Again, this is just another example of the more you use the healing brush, the more you're going to just, it's touch and feel, and you're going to sort of just know, okay, here's what I want to do with it. All right, so the other way that I use the healing brush is to get rid of like these flyaways. You can see she's got this hair running over her eye and out here across her head, things like that. Sometimes you want to get rid of some of that. So this is the really difficult section, so we're going to work with this. Up here, this little hair is a piece of cake, so we're just going to sample uh, around it, going like that, great. Now using uh, the eyebrow, again, we can just take the edge of the eyebrow, just like we did, and just begin going through and getting rid of this hair that hangs over her eyebrow, all right, just like so. And then I'm going to come in here and get rid of that, great. And then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to pull back. See, I can, I can start at the edge of the eyebrow and pull back away from it, and it's going to heal very nicely for us. All right, but see, if I just sample here in the middle and try to drag through, it gets darker because Photoshop says, hey, there's this big dark region up here, and it wants to pull some of that color. So in this case, we actually could go ahead and try using the lasso tool, but I have a feeling it's still the lasso tool is going to be grabbing some of the darker stuff. But hey, you know what? Let's give it a shot. There we go. And it doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit too much of a harsh edge, but we're going to leave it. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial. And then here in the eye, this is where things get trickier. So what I want to do is you have these really strong uh, lines, right? These creases where her eyelid is. So that's a perfect sample point. So we're going to start right here and I'm going to line up the crease just like that and I'm going to pull away from it. All right, and you can see we have almost a perfect clone. Now it's not quite as perfect as I want it to be, but again, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to give ourselves a little bit of leeway. Normally I would spend a little bit more time um, working on this kind of thing, but we're going to kind of rush through it here. All right, and then in here, whoops, we're going to sample from this line. All right, anywhere you can see a definite line, go ahead and feel free to sample from it and work with that. All right, I actually don't mind that. There's this, whoa, hello. There's this one bit of hair right here that I'm just going to really size my healing brush way down. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to get rid of that. And then I'll pull away from it and clean that right up, all right? And that's gonna be negligible once we pull out. And then over here, we've got this tricky hair hanging down across her eyeball. But remember, we have this hard edge on the top and bottom of her eye that we can sample from. So we're gonna try using that. So I'm gonna start here on her eye. I'm gonna line things up. I'm gonna go down a little bit and then I'm gonna pull up. There we go, not bad. You can see that we did pick up a little bit of the dark here from the colored part of her eye, but we're not gonna worry about that too much. And then right here, we're going to start with that edge and pull up. And you can see just like that, we get rid of that hair uh, running over the eye with the healing brush tool. And that little dark spot is going to bug me just a little bit. So actually, probably what I would do here is just grab like the dodge tool and go in. And just because it's a little dark, just paint over it a couple times. See that? Just lighten it right up. There we go. And it becomes invisible. So there you go. We've gotten rid of hair. Um, going over her face and we've gotten rid of all those blemishes and things like that. Now the last thing that I normally use the healing brush for is bags under the eyes. Now again, because she's young and has great skin and because of the light really, um, a lot of times if the light's too harsh, you're going to get these really dramatic bags under the eyes, um, which is considered not so flattering. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on the eyes and what I like to do is do this on a new layer. So create a new layer and we'll call this under eyes and then grab the healing brush. And what I like to do is make the healing brush pretty big, all right? So it's kind of gonna cover this swath of area beneath her eye. And I start from the nose and I work my way out. So I'm gonna sample straight below where I'm gonna start, right? And then I'm just in one swath of the healing brush, I'm gonna pull straight out, okay? And let it do its thing. There we go, not bad. Now you can see we have this um, kind of crazy, whoop, we got this kind of crazy untextured light line here. So I'll use the healing brush another time and just clean that up, all right, until it kind of blends in a little bit. I don't need it to blend perfectly. I'm just looking to get rid of any kind of really high contrast lines. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for underneath the other eye, all right? Now the key when you're doing this underneath the eyes is not to completely make the bags or the shadows go away, but rather we're just trying to minimize or reduce them. That's why we're doing this on a new layer. See, here's before, here's after, okay? It looks pretty bad. So what I do is I take this layer and just reduce the opacity, like something like 35, 40, all right? So there's before, there's after. All you're doing is starting to smooth that skin out, bring up the brightness a little bit, and just help kind of level out the tones across the face, and it works wonders.
So there you have it. That's how I use the healing brush. Those are the things I do with the healing brush. You can do an incredible amount when people talk about smoothing skin without losing texture in the skin. You, if you spend a lot of time with the healing brush on somebody's face, you can do an incredible amount of work and really smooth that skin out while preserving a lot of detail. So here's before and here is after. All right, so just a few clicks with the healing brush and a few minutes later, and there you have it. Much smoother skin, yet you can see we've still preserved all of this great texture in her skin. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for sticking around and watching it. Go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com for more video tutorials. Thanks for watching.